You give him your name. You type it in now. Uh, my name is Gaming J the Great. Actually, let's let's go with J the Great. Oops. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm messing up my name. This is gonna be interesting to see what it registers my name as. Oh, I typed in J the Game. Okay. Well, whatever. Man, who knew that I could mess up typing in my name? <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we are checking out Eamon, the computerized fantasy role playing system designed for the Apple II. This is the first Apple II game that I am officially playing. Uh, it was the first one that I figured out how to get playing. So here we go. Uh, Eamon is a classic. RPG, and I'll be talking a little more, more about what I mean by classic RPG uh, in a bit. It's a heavily text-based game, so probably a lot of my commentary is going to be just sort of reading the game and reacting to um, what's happening, because I won't be able to talk and read at the same time. So normally I play and, and talk about random stuff. Anyway, um, let's get right into it, um, and you guys can start to experience what Eamon is like. So this is a text-based adventure game, and it starts out, you are in the outer chamber of the Hall of the Guild of Free Adventures. Many men and women are guzzling beer, and there is a loud sing and there is loud singing and laughter. On the north side of the chamber is a cubbyhole with a desk. Hmm. Over the desk is a sign which says "Register here or else." Do you go over to the desk or join the men drinking the beer? So I tried this game very briefly before I, I started recording this video. And if you press M to go hang out with the men, somebody stabs you in the back and you die. So let's just go over to the desk. Let's be good little adventurers and follow the instructions and registers we're supposed to. This is like a conference, I suppose. You're supposed to register before you actually start adventuring. So you, gr you are greeted there by a burly Irishman who looks at you with a scowl and asks, What's your name? That's my attempt at an Irish accent. That was actually pretty good. I'm, I'm um, notoriously horrible with my friends for my terrible accents. You give him your name. You type it in now. Uh, my name is Gaming J the Great. Actually, let's let's go with J the Great. Oops. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm messing up my name. This is going to be interesting to see what it registers my name as. Oh, I typed in J the Game. Okay, well, whatever. Man, who knew that I could mess up typing in my name? D don't you hate that when you go to type something and you're thinking of something else? I meant to—I literally meant to type J the Great. And I typed in J the Game. My God. Um, he starts looking through his book, muttering about good for nothing young adventurers should be taken out and hung. Jesus, it's a little ageist. He eventually looks down at you and says, "Your name's uh, not in here." Have you given it to me all right? How do you answer? Yes. He hits his forehead and says, Ah, you must be new here. Well, wait just a minute, and I'll bring someone out to take care of ye. My accent is so bad, guys. I apologize. You know, just to show you how bad I am at accents, so if anyone has seen Game of Thrones, there's a character, Egret, in the early seasons, who, uh, who, you know, seduces Jon Snow, and her famous line is, you know nothing, Jon Snow, but she says it with her accent. Okay, this is my legitimate attempt to say that line in her sort of Irishy accent. Oh, God, a lot of pressure right now. You'll know nothing. <laughs> so bad. You'll know nothing, Jon Snow. <laughs> I sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger. All right, the Irishman says, First I must know whether ye be male or female. Which are ye? It's M for ale, male, F for female. Well, we're going to be male. The Irishman walks away, and in and in walks a tall man of pop, possibly elvish descent. He studies you for a moment and says, Here's a booklet of instructions for you to read. Uh, and your prime attributes are? So I could be... Oh, I have hardiness, agility, and charisma. Okay. Imagine someone just assigned those to you. They're like, yeah, you're about a seven in terms of charisma, but your hardiness is, is pretty good. Agility, that's more like a two. You're, you're not very good at it. You're not very nimble. Like if someone did that to you in real life. Very judgy. Your character is such a poor excuse for an adventure that we will allow you to commit suicide. What? <laughs> what? Imagine you went to join an organization and they were like, 
Well, you're not a, you're not that good. So here's one option for you: just go ahead and commit suicide. Maybe you'll you know be reincarnated as someone better. Oh my God! All right, I guess Jay the game committed suicide. We resurrect you again. Your prime attributes are okay. Uh, I I think that's better. So we committed suicide and we came back as someone else. The man behind the desk takes back the instructions. Oh, I didn't even get to read that. Okay. Well, here we are. We are in the uh, the hall, the main hall, and now we get to um, we can shop, we can buy things, we can go on adventures. So when I said this is a classic adventure, we're gonna see this is a totally text-based adventure. I don't even I don't know for certain, but I don't think there are almost any graphics in this game. And you may be thinking, oh, what a what a crappy RPG. I wish I was playing like Baldur's Gate or Fallout or something. But one thing is, you know, the original RPGs, like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff, it was all text-based. People didn't even necessarily draw maps of where they were. It was just a dungeon master describing to you what happened. It was kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure. It was literally just an interactive story. And I'm actually kind of excited to play this game because I feel like it's a throwback to what RPGs used to be. Now, I'm not saying that things like Baldur's Gate and Fallout aren't good games and fun and stuff, but it seems like with modern RPGs, there's, they've really emphasized the simulation component, and everything's become a first-person shooter or top-down real-time strategy game where you just click on enemies like Diablo and so on and so forth. That is not what RPGs were originally about. They're originally very story-emphasized games. And part of me always kind of wishes that somebody would take that original idea for an RPG and really bring it into the modern gaming scene and do like an RPG, um, you know, a, 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 not necessarily a text-based, but a story-based RPG that almost had nothing to do with the graphics and so on that was going on behind it and was just more about having that interactive choose-your-own-adventure type story. I don't know. It's it's hard to do because computers are much better able to handle first-person shooters and real-time strategy games than they are to think about interactive stories. But maybe one day AI will be to a point where like an AI could theoretically be a dungeon master and run an RPG properly. Anyway, I'm talking a lot. Let's go actually into this thing. So um, let's visit the weapon shop for weapons and armor. As you enter the weapon shop, Marcos Cavalier, the owner, comes out from uh, the back room and says, Well, as I live and breathe, if it isn't my old pal Jay the game. <laughs> Freshly revived from a recent suicide. So you want to buy a weapon, sell a weapon, or get some better armor. Well, we're going to buy. Marcos smiles at you and says, Good. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta the best. You want a axe, bow, mace. D dude, you talk very weirdly. Let's get a sword. I feel like a sword is a very traditional weapon. Marco says, well, I just happen to have three swords varying in quality. Got a very good one for 91 gold. A fair one for 45 GP is gold pieces. I'm an old D&D player, so I can deduce these things. GP is gold pieces. And a kind of shabby one for 23. So you walk into a store to buy something. There's like, I've got a good one, an okay one, and a piece of crap. Which one do you want? Um swords okay we don't want to spend all our money we're gonna go right down the middle uh, so we're gonna take the the fair one uh, how about some armor yes I would like some armor armor section shows you leather armor chain armor and plate I can put you in any of these very cheaply uh, 91 holy crap okay we're gonna get chain we're gonna split the, the difference again you do not have enough I do not give credit now how about a shield uh, okay, sure, give me a shield. I don't even know how much gold I have, by the way. I'm just buying things, like, I don't see any place right where I have gold. Okay, uh, hire a wizard to teach you some spells. Well, we probably don't have enough money with that for that. Let's check our bank. You have trouble spotting a Shylock McFenny, the local banker, due to his large belly. Is the banker just hanging out in, like, a crowd of people? And, like, like is there no, like, established area for the bank? The bank is not a building that we go to, because normally when you go to the bank, you don't have to try and spot the banker. Um, you attract his attention. He comes over to you and says, yeah, this seems like a roaming bank. He's just like a dude walking around town, <laughs> and you just hand him money if you want to deposit stuff. Uh, Jay the Game, my dear boy, what a pleasure to see you. Um, do you want to make a deposit or a withdrawal? Withdrawal. Give me all your money. Well, you have zero gold pieces stored with me. How many do you want to take back? 100? 
The banker throws you a terrible glance and says, It's more than you've got. You know I don't make loans to your kind. With that, he loses himself in the crowd. So yeah, literally, when when we say go to the bank, when it says find banker, it literally means find somebody ran wandering around the crowds. <laughs> what a weird way to operate a bank. Imagine if that's how your bank worked. There was no place, you, there was no bank to attend. You just had to like randomly go to the mall and try and find somebody who worked for the bank. Very weird. Examine your abilities. Okay. Uh, hardiness, agility, charisma, no spells known. Uh, weapons abilities. Uh, okay, sure. Golden hand, 110. Hmm. Maybe I should go back. I'm just going to go back and quickly buy some uh, leather armor. Uh, search, 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 searching for a maze. Oh, uh, I did not want to search for a mage. I wanted to buy some armor. Armor, yes, and give me the leather. Okay. All right, let's actually try and go on an adventure here. All right, here we go. We're about to adventure into the beginner's cave. All right, it's waking up the monsters. Good, good. This gives us a chance to talk a little more. So, um, in case you're wondering what what I mean when I say traditional RPGs were more story based, they weren't. They didn't emphasize maps or like clicking on things or moving around certain grids and stuff. If you want a really good example of what real Dungeons and Dragons RPGing was like back in the day, there's a great episode by Community where they play Dungeons and Dragons. And if you watch the episode, a lot of it is them just talking to Abed, who is the dungeon master, and him telling them what happens. And they just sort of um, talk things out. And they have to make some rolls to test abilities and fight. But there isn't, it, it's not like when you play an RPG these days on a computer where it like shows your guy at a specific point in the dungeon and you click where you want him to walk and it takes him this much time to walk and then you click on the bad guys even if it's turn based it's still not the same as sort of what I would consider a true traditional story based RPG and here we go okay so we're starting the beginner's cave you've no trouble finding a horse um, that you well borrow <laughs> some a thief to take you on your first adventure you follow several signs to take you to the beginner's cave aptly named cave. I guess it's good for for new adventures. You're at the entrance of a cave. To your south, over the tunnel entrance, is a sign saying beginners only. So if you're more advanced, you're not allowed into this cave. To the north is a road back to town. As you stand there, you see a local knight marshal come out and inspect you. Eventually, the knight marshal says, you may now proceed, and he walks away. So they're policing this cave up here, apparently. You're at the cave, you're at the entrance of a cave, to the south over the tunnel is a sign saying beginners only. To the north is a road back to town. Go south. Uh, you're in a dark north-south tunnel. To the north you see a bright light streaming from the outside. To the south you see a flickering torchlight. But you cannot make out any details. All right, guys, we're now venturing into the in, into the cave here. I wonder what foes will oppose us? What treasures are we going to find? I'm hoping that we save someone, like a damsel in distress of some kind, or we solve some kind of ancient mystery. You can imagine if they have like a standing cave, like the beginner's cave, that it would be pretty pillaged by now, because all the early adventurers are just necessarily going there. So, you know, there might not be anything for us to find, but let's see. You're in a huge chamber. The roof rises out of sight. Burning torches line the walls, making it easy to see tunnels that lead north and south. There are small side chambers to both east and west. See, isn't it fascinating how when you're playing this game, you're sort of visualizing these like massive uh, chambers um, in your own head. I find that so interesting, so so different from modern uh, video game RPGs. Okay, let's. What do you think? Go east or west? Because we don't want to go further south yet. We want to explore this chamber. Let's start with west. Okay, you are in a small side chamber to the west of the large chamber. It is very cold here, and the only light comes in dimly from the large chamber. There's a huge black rat with sharp teeth. The white white teeth here. There's a huge black rat with sharp white teeth here. Oh, okay, <laughs> I read that weird. A huge tan rat with sharp white teeth here, and a pile of diamonds. Yo, three rats guarding some diamonds? That's a fight I'm willing to, to have. Okay. Attack rat. Jay the game attacks a tan rat. A miss. The black rats. Miss, miss, miss. Uh, the tan rat flees. Okay, so we scared a rat away. 
Um, attack rat. Let's keep going. Attacks. I miss again. Uh, a rat hit me. Bounces. You know, if a rat was attacking a knight in full armor, you know, this isn't even a battle. This is like pest control. But yeah, what could a rat do to me? Okay, let's just keep going. Attack rat. We gotta hit these rats eventually. Okay, attack rat. Oops. Miss, miss, miss. Well, we're just gonna keep doing this for a little while. Uh, I dropped my weapon? What? I attacked the brown rat, a fumble, weapon dropped. A critical hit? Uh, take sword? Oh, get sword. It's nice how it shows you commands if you type in something that it doesn't understand. Attack rat. Uh, the brown rat flees. So we're literally, we're, we're unable to kill these rats, but we're definitely scaring them away. I will take that. Uh, oh, I, I guess all the rats fled. <laughs> all right, get the diamonds. Yes! Da -da -da -da! We need like a Legend of Zelda like victory sound right here. That would make us feel very good. So dudes, we totally just beat the crap. Well, we didn't beat the crap. We scared the crap out of a couple of rats. Got a couple of diamonds. We are on our way to being heroic adventurers, the kind that are sung about in songs throughout the land. So, uh, go east. Let's go back to the big chamber. Oh, the rats are all here. Okay, let's start attacking the rats. <laughs> As we watch us miss. Now, it's kind of interesting that, you know, traditionally RPGs are, are very sort of... Um, you know, medieval themed thing. Like, there totally are sci fi RPGs and stuff, but like the real original RPGs, like Dungeons and Dragons, is the real grandfather to all modern RPGs, and it was fantasy based. And really, when other people tried to make their own. Oh, we killed a rat! Huzzah! When we. Uh, when, when all the other RPGs started to try to copy um, Dungeons and Dragons, they all sort of made fantasy. RPGs, I guess. And really, I mean, Dungeons & Dragons itself was inspired by Lord of the Rings, and this game was inspired by Dungeons & Dragons and Lord of the Rings. So it makes sense that fantasy is really intertwined with uh, RPGs, but it's interesting that really, there's tons of different RPGs these days, but at the core I think there's more fantasy-based RPGs than anything else. And so there's just something very fantasy-ish about the idea of an, an RPG, which I'm, I, I like, actually. I actually like this. So we're in a large chamber, we see a dead rat. Okay, we went west. Now it's time to go east. Let's see what's what's happening eastward. You're in a small slide chamber. To the east of a large chamber, it is very cold here, and the only light that comes in dimly from the large chamber, there's a rat. There's a grizzled hermit who smells as if he hasn't taken a bath in 40 years in the room. Bottle here with a strange potion inside. Okay, we want to kill that rat, possibly kill the hermit, and possibly take that potion. In fact, we definitely want to take that potion. Let's kill the rat. Um, I fumbled. Okay. Uh, Hermit is here. Oh, the rat is dead. <laughs> Helps if you actually read. Talk to Hermit. Uh, oh, okay. Here are the only commands we can do. Get, drop, look, uh, blast, smile, say, I, attack, heal. Okay, can we say hello? <laughs> okay, hello. <laughs> the hermit is here. Crap, how do we talk to him? Talk. Okay, hold on. Get, drop, look up, down, north, west, east, south, power, blast, smile, say hello, read, escape. I uh, attack. Well, let's get the potion then. Huh? Oh, get bottle. Got it. Hermit is here. I mean, I wish I could say something to this hermit. You know what? We're we're I, I'm tempted to um, attack and kill this hermit, but being a good hero, we're not gonna. We're gonna leave him be. Um. Oh, is the hermit following us? Because he's totally here now. Let's go further south and see what we find. You are in the north end of a long hall. A tunnel goes north um, to the east and west. Are doors that are bolted shut, locking something in. In the dim light, you can see the hall goes south, but you cannot make out any details. The hermit is totally following us. Okay, we might have to kill him if things go south, if you know what I mean. 
You're in the middle of a long hall. The doors are bolted on your sides. The hall extends north and south. You're going to keep going south for a little while. Here at the end of the south hall, to your great shock, there are two doors in the east uh, and west. The hall goes north from here. Broken tunnel goes south. Hmm. Doors versus a broken tunnel. Ah, it's a hard decision. Let's go west and see what we find. Okay, you're in a small, stark cell with a door on the east side. Okay, so there's nothing in there. Uh, I mean, I guess we could be searching for things. Maybe I should have done that. Let's just see what's in the other room. You're in a small, stark cell with a door on each side. There's a large chest in the center of the room. Open chest. Bingo! As you approach the chest, it suddenly becomes alive and tentacles come out of the side, holding you fast. Another tentacle rises at the top, attempts to hurt you. Uh, a chest shaped monsters in the room. Attack chest. Uh, oh, attack mimic. Okay. Attack the mimic. Miss. Hermit attacks. Oh, the hermit is helping us. Cool. We actually have an NPC companion. And unlike the modern games, he can't get in our way and block us from walking through a door because this is all text based. Haha. -ha. Attack mimic. Mimic. Uh, the Mimic is dead! As the Mimic dies, it rolls over and you find a ring underneath. Uh, get ring. Totally. Where... Can I wear the ring? Oops. Wear ring. Uh, okay. Hold on. Drink ready. Retreat. Inventory. Wave. Tack. Examine. Drop. Look. Get. Hmm. Okay. I, I guess I have everything. Oh, we can flee. That's good to know that we can flee and retreat. Okay. Uh, can we search? No. Can't do any searches. That's okay. We're going to go west. Now we're going to go south. Because that's the only way we haven't gone. We're working our way through this dungeon. Kill the rag. Kill the mimic. You're in a tunnel going north and south. Sides of the tunnel are very broken and rough. You see a torchlight to the south. Go south. We should name our hermit companion here. Like his name is like... Let's call him Doug. Doug the Hermit. And a good old DH here is... Uh, uh, the most loyal companion an adventurer could really ask for. You're in a T-intersection. A brightly burning torch is bolted to the south. Uh, dark tunnels lead to the north and east. The west is a place where once a door stood. It has been torn from its hinges. Hmm. Well, let's go east first, because I'm in no rush to go into a room where a door has literally been ripped from its hinges. You're in a dark... Uh, east-west tunnel, you can see torchlight in both directions. See, what's interesting now is I'm actually, I'm adventuring in here. It's a pretty, uh, you know, uh, simple dungeon so far. It's just been a straight shot south, and now we're going east versus west. But if I was playing this, or a more complicated dungeon, I might want to be drawing out where I am in the dungeon so I don't get lost. And this is actually how old RPGs work. This is what people did. Um, the adventuring party, it was up to them to draw out the dungeon as they went through it, just basically to keep their own orientation. I'm kind of tempted to do that, but I think this dungeon is simple enough. I don't have to do it. So, east-west tunnel, you can see torchlight in both directions. Okay, go east. Uh, you're at the top of a flight of stairs, a torch in the wall. It looks... Uh, very dark down there. A tunnel heads west. Uh, okay. Go down. You're at the bottom of a flight of uh, a flight of a light. Wait. You're at the bottom of a flight of a light can be seen at the top of the stairs. Uh, I'm reading that incorrectly. I don't know what that sentence is supposed to say. A very dim light can be seen down the tunnel to the east. Go east. Okay. You are at east-west tunnel. Dim light can be seen in both directions. Go east. Okay. You're at east-west tunnel. You see light to the east and feel a cool wind coming from there. You smell a hint of salt. Oh, we're coming out to what? What do you guys think? Beach? You're in a small bay. The high walls surround uh, you so that the only exit is back in the tunnel. Uh, on the bank of the sea is a broken boat. The hermit is here. You see a man with a beard and a brass ring on his ear. He's wearing clothes made out of silk, wielding a very f a fancy, fancy gray sword. I think this is a pirate. No, oh, <laughs> literally it is. As the pirate mutters the word you can't make out, bright green flame surrounds the blade of his sword. There's a large pile of jewels here. This sounds like a very magical pirate. Um, let's, uh, what do you think? 
Let's uh, get jewels. He might attack us. Got it. Uh, Herman attacks a pirate. Pirate is hurting. Pirate attacks J. That's J the game. J the game is hurting. Okay. Attack pirate. I miss. I miss. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm badly injured. Okay. Time to flee, people. We took his jewels. We are fleeing. Go west. Like the little thieves we are. Go west. Okay. Go up. We're just bolting. Gonna keep running here. Keep going west to the one place we have not been. You know, you were in what was once an obvious, obviously a library. Most of the books have been destroyed. The scraps lying on the ground at the door, torn. Blah blah blah. Herman is here. There's an old book here. It glows in the darkness remarkably well. Get book. You got it. Okay. Can I can I go any further west or no? Um, okay, go east. Dudes, I mean, I don't know what else there is to do. So we're just going to keep going north, and we're going to totally exit this dungeon. Okay, we, we killed a rat. We killed an, a weird chest. We, what did we do? We, we stole from a pirate. We stole a book. Oh, wait, let's read the book. What am I doing? Um, as you read the book, you feel a weird sensation taking on. Suddenly realize you're turning into a small fish. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what? You flop three times and die? What? <laughs> what an unceremonious end to our adventure. I was literally on my way out of the dungeon. I was going to head back, turn in all my booty, and I read a book and turned into a fish. But you know what? That's the kind of twist you don't get in your modern RPGs. You would never read a book and fall out, turn into a fish and just die. Oh my god. Well, that was the unceremonious end of Gaming J. Um, I, I love, by the way, how the colors are kind of all screwed up here. This is a thing of the Apple too. It didn't have enough graphical memory to um, have sort of full color information, so it's like it mixed purples with greens and blues and oranges in this weird way. There's a really great video. You can find great videos describing why it is that way. But, um, yeah, anytime I see colors like that, it totally reminds me of my childhood because we had Apple IIs in school. But, guys, we, we, we kind of succeeded, and then we kind of utterly failed at the end. Um, I'm not going to play another adventure because I think it would just be a lot more reading, but I actually had some fun here. So this is Eamon. Eamon is a terrific text-based RPG adventure game. And if you were looking for a classic RPG experience, this is... One you might want to check out, to be totally honest with you. It's not going to be for everyone. I know that you know modern RPGs on computers are very more graphical, and it's more about um, moving your guys around the screen and clicking and this and that. But there's something for me, having grown up playing D&D with friends um, and other RPGs, there's something so nostalgic about going back to the storytelling way of playing a game, where we didn't have a graphical representation of our guy on the screen. We didn't have to click and move and watch our guy walk around several tiles and this and that. We just had descriptions. We had to use our imagination uh, to kind of think about what was happening. And that's actually kind of a fun, it's kind of a lost art, in my opinion. It's a way of playing an RPG that is not really represented very well on computers. You know, I kind of hope that one day RPGs like this may make a, a revival or may make a comeback in some sense. I'm not saying I want these to replace games like Fallout, because Fallout, you know, Fallout's a terrific game. I, I love Fallout. But it's just sort of a different way of playing an RPG that really has kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, and that would be really fun if it, it made a bit of a comeback here. One last thing I will say before I kind of wrap up totally here is that the creator of this, Donald Brown, heavily encouraged modding. And if you were interested in this game, there are literally hundreds of adventures that you can download, ranging from fantasy settings to contemporary settings to sci-fi settings. Um, the different adventures have been modded to include new abilities and new commands. You know, the creator of this heavily emphasized modding. And I think, I've said this before, that is a terrific, I think, credo for game developers. You know, a lot of developers don't want you modding their games. But in all honesty, modding only enriches the gaming experience. It gives free extra content to players. It 
leads to innovations and further developments, right? Like classic examples are things like Counter-Strike, Dota, Team Fortress. All these games came out of mods of previous games. And so I love that, um, you know, when developers encourage modding, and Eamon, this is not a game I ever played before, by the way, but um, having read a little bit about it, Eamon, the fact that the developer encouraged modding it led to these hundreds and hundreds of adventures that you can play. So you can totally get this these days. There are different ways you can go about getting a hold of it. You can even play it uh, in your web browser if you want. But if you're looking for that classic RPG experience, you're going to find it here and you're going to find so much variety and it's really thanks to the openness uh, of the developer. So, I mean, these are all principles that I heavily support. And uh, that's all I have to say about it. So the pros of this game, it is a, it is a very flexible uh, simple yet kind of fun basic RPG experience. Yes, you have to do some reading, but I actually found the reading wasn't too bad. Um, they kept it pretty succinct, but also just give you a little bit of description to let your imagination run wild. And it really harkens back to a different era of RPGing, really the paper and pencil RPG. Now, um, the cons of it, of course, are that it is text only. It is not the type of RPG that some modern gamers are going to like. You know, people who grew up playing your Fallouts, um, playing your Baldur's Gates, playing your, your you know, your whatevers. Th this may not be the, the type of thing that they enjoy. Um, I still would encourage people to give it a try because I think it is a really fun way of, of RPGing. It really is more like an interactive story than like a video game per se. Um, but I understand it wouldn't necessarily be for everyone. So is this a game you should try before you die? I personally would say that if you like even reading a uh, fantasy adventure, um, you might want to give this a try because it's a little bit more like a choose-your-own-adventure. If you think of it more as like a book, I think you're definitely going to have some fun with this. It's sort of like a video gameized book. Um, at the same time, you know, if this really does not look like your thing, uh, you may want to skip it. So I give this one a soft recommend. Um, I personally would advocate for it, but not everyone's going to agree with me. Um, anyway, those are my, my thoughts. Uh, I died. I never thought I would die in a video game by reading a book and turning into a fish, but I guess that's what happened to me. Um, I'm going to end it there. Guys, if you have enjoyed this video, if you liked kind of exploring this dungeon with me in this, this uh, 8-bit bit text world, uh, please give me a like, give me a subscribe, because we'll be back in a couple days with a new video and a new game. Um, and until then, guys, uh, take care of yourselves. Don't read any magical books, because you never know what you might turn into. Uh, peace. <laughs>